गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन ओके नाउ आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू द थर्ड वेबिनार ऑन सोइल एंड डॉक्टर करगीत विदर्स अगेन टू बी कंटिन्यूइंग द Uh, the webinar, and uh, he told me that today he has a lot of friends in Udaipur, which is good. And Udaipur is the city of lakes in India, beautiful touristic place, <laughs> wonderful place to visit. I think sometimes we have opportunity to visit Udaipur. That is a wonderful place. So we have. Participants today from Bhutan, uh, from Taiwan, from Philippines, from India, and what else? Please write down your name so that uh, and I could see that uh, there are a number of uh, students from Bhutan who have been joining this uh, webinar. That is a good number. and that is good so far we have 16 participants but if we include bhutan then we can see that there are a number of more participants so i pass on to dr gar to start up uh, with his presentation and after gar is finished then we will have some time around Five to ten minutes for discussion, and then that we please those of you can stay, please stay so that we can have some discussion after that. So, Doctor Gar, thank you, Doctor Deshbandhu, and good morning to everyone. Today we are going to talk about the soil temperature. and its impact on the ecosystem as well as the soil so <clears throat> question which should come next please question which should come in our mind is that what is a soil temperature and how we understand the soil temperature so soil temperature is a kind of parameter that will tell us about the growth of the plant the health of the plant activities of the microbial organisms and of course the soil ecology and overall the ecology of the whole biosphere that means the ecosphere that means the land the water the soil the atmosphere everywhere in globe we try to discover and measure the soil temperature and we have a definite standardized method of measuring it and that's why it has a standard procedure and we call it as a globe protocol then we will try to understand how these experiments are conducted how the investigations are done by the school students by the teachers by the globe scientists by the citizen scientists and all others and how we can collect the data and analyze them next please so <clears throat> what is the temperature temperature actually refers to that whether a particular place here we can call it as a soil is cool or warm or hot and generally we do it as at a specific soil depth we generally do not take the temperature of the surface of the soil we take the temperature of the at a particular depth of the soil where at that particular depth the soil microorganisms 
as well as the soil, uh, this plant roots and other things are there. So we can always understand that the temperature may actually uh, change according to the season. Maybe it is affected by the vegetation cover, the atmospheric conditions, the moisture content in the soil, etc., etc. All these factors affect the soil temperature. So why do we want to understand the soil temperature? As we know that all the ecological processes, all the processes in an ecosystem, all the activities, they all are physically and chemically controlled and the, the soil microorganisms as well as macroorganisms, the presence of the organic matter in the soil, the detritus activities of the microorganisms in the debris or in the litter, all these affect and influence the soil and all these make the nutrients availability for the plant growth and development as well as it will determine the soil fertility. So the soil temperature becomes very important. The plant growth include the growth of the buds as well as the growth of the roots. In the soil, the seed germination is also a very important process. In general, there is an optimum temperature for the germination of the seeds. In general, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius of the temperature is considered as ideal for seed germination. Similarly, the microorganisms if the temperature of the soil is below 10 degrees Celsius, then their activities will cease. And if the temperature goes very high, more than 30, 35 degrees Celsius, then also it will affect the seed germination and the microbial activities. So in order to understand the nutrient cycle, the population dynamics of the uh, soil, and the number of the bacteria, number of the decomposing uh, uh, this, uh, organisms, etc. in the soil, we have to understand the soil temperature. We all know that if we take even one gram of the soil and we analyze it properly, one can find 10 billion microorganisms inside the soil. 10 billion, just think. All the students, please see, 10 million microorganisms can be found in a one gram of the soil. So the soil in and around the root zone of a tree or of a plant or of a shrub or of a shrub or of a herb or of a grass, it forms a sphere around it and we call it as a rhizosphere. Next please. So, <clears throat> of course, the soil temperature is always linked with the air temperature. And the most upper part of the soil actually acts as a insulator. Insulator for heat from the surface to the solid earth. Similarly, whatever the solar energy comes to the earth, reach directly to the soil surface and from soil surface, it is reflected back in the atmosphere. So it actually uh, heats the air. The air directly does not have the temperature. It is only the heat which, it is, which is actually given by the Soil, soil or the earth surface that makes it possible. Now, soil and rocks, they have a very important aspect as compared to air I'm talking about. And they have a very, very high heat capacity. What do we mean by the word heat capacity? 
heat capacity is the number of heat units which are needed to raise the temperature of any body, including soil, including water, by one degree Celsius. So the soil has a higher and greater heat capacity as compared to the air and of course as compared to even the water. Water has much higher than the highest is of the earth or the soil. So if the temperature is cool as compared to the air, so it will be always cooler as compared to the air during summer months and will be higher and it will be more warmer as compared to the air temperature which we find in the winter. Now sometimes at many places the soil temperature especially in the desert areas where there is too much of the sun and too much of the high temperature the surface temperature of the soil may be as high as 50 degrees Celsius. At the same time in higher altitudes or in the European countries or in the temperate climate during winters, the surface temperature may be as high, as low as zero degree or less than zero degree. But at the same time, if we go at a depth of the soil, the temperature may be different. So the temperature will be lower as compared to the surface temperature in desert areas in the depth of the soil. Similarly, the temperature will be higher as compared to the surface temperature in a temperate region where the temperature in the depth will be a much higher. So that all the plant parts, especially underground part, plant parts, may remain a bit more warmer or more cooler depending upon the situation of the place where the soil is present. Next, please. Next. <clears throat> yes. Now, this has a significant uh, effect on the growth of the plants, the budding of the plants, the buds which will actually uh, give the new plants or the etc. It has effect on the leaf fall. It has effect on the decomposition of the leaf fall and all the litter matter which is present on the surface of the soil. So the soil temperature will tell us or to the farmers when one should start farming practices. In a temperate region, if it is very high cold season in December, January and early February, then the farmers will start their sowing of the seeds, etc. and sprouting activities in March. Similarly, in desert areas, they will start the agricultural activities and the germination of the seeds once the rainy season starts. So the higher temperature, the chemical reactions speed up. Now here, Please don't confuse the word with the higher temperature. Higher to what? Higher to the 10 or 15 degree Celsius. Because for any chemical reaction, in general, 25 to 35 degree Celsius is considered as the best temperature. So higher than 10 degree Celsius temperature will actually speed up the chemical reactions. Similarly, the bacteria, worms, fungi, the actinomycetes, the algae, the protozoa, all these organisms will become very much active and will accelerate the process of decomposition and organic material and plant growth when the temperature is most suitable or optimum that is more than 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Next please. So, we in GLOBE measure the soil temperature. The soil temperature is generally measured preferably every week. And 
when we measure the temperature, it should not be like this, that during winter season, we go to measure the temperature at 2 p.m. And during summer season, we go to measure the temperature at 8 a.m. No, it should be always be at the same time in each day. Each day means the day of a week. Now, we generally measure the soil temperature where we have already put the atmospheric shelter. Generally, within the 10 meters of the atmospheric uh, shelter site, we measure the soil temperature. The soil temperature can be taken in generally weekly, but if you take it daily, it will be very good. And if it is done, diurnal measurements protocol is generally measured every three months. Every three months means in, during the winter season, during the spring season, during the summer season, and during the rainy season. So all these four seasons are taken care of for the or rainy. Some places we call it as an autumn season. So four seasons are taken and each season we try to have a diurnal protocol for the soil temperature. Now sometimes it is possible in some schools that they do not have that much of time for the students. In that case, you can measure the soil temperature every month. Next please. So what we require for the um, soil temperature? We need a calibrated soil thermometer. Now, what is a soil thermometer? Can you see something in my hand? Hello? Can you see? This is a very big, very long thermometer, which has a shape of a nail. And it is a very long nail with a dial type uh, thing on it. One can see here also in this picture. Now we have to calibrate it. This thermometer needs to be calibrated. We need a beaker. We need water for calibration. And for soil temperature uh, measurements, you need, a, of course, a sampling site. And if the sampling site has not been defined, we need to define it. Of course, soil thermometer we need. We need a calibration thermometer. Then we need spacers. Now, this is very important. Just see. This is called a spacer. This is another one. This is another spacer. One can see very easily two spacers. One is of big size, another is of the smaller size. So, need spacers. A spacer we need both for 5 degrees depth of the 5 centimeter and for the depth of the 7, uh, sorry, 10 centimeters. So, in case the soil is hard, in that case, we need a nail. This nail should be at least 12 centimeter or longer. And on this nail, we should mark the 5 centimeter, 7 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter, so that we can have very easily, you can put the nail in the soil. You need a watch so that you can uh, measure the time. You need a entry app or a logbook or a scientific logbook. Need a pen or a pencil. And in case the soil is very, very hard, then we can always uh, hammer and we need a hammer next. Next, please. Next. So, <clears throat> how to calibrate a soil thermometer? Just say. Can you see my hands? Just say. I have taken a tumbler, but better in science, we take a beaker. So, in this beaker, which is of the room temperature, we pour roughly 250 milliliter of the water and we can always put some ice in it. Just see, I put the ice. So it has become a 
what you call ice bath and on the ice bath when there is a freezing temperature then the temp soil temperature or the temperature should show is 0 degree celsius another method is that we have already a calibrated thermometer with us and in this calibrated thermometer we can put our instrument that is soil thermometer as well as the calibrated thermometer. This is a calibrated thermometer. So we put both and then we try to find out whether the temperature in both of them is same or different. You have to wait for at least two minutes so that the reading which comes in both the thermometer if it is same or there is a very little difference. Difference less than 2 degrees Celsius, then we can think that the soil thermometer is calibrated. In other words, the globe for soil allows you to have a small difference of 2 degrees Celsius. The temperature difference is greater than 2 degrees Celsius, then we have to wait for more minutes and try to find out whether this is correct or not. Another very important point. In case the soil thermometer, even after three, four, five readings, does not show the same temperature, then we have, is, we have to, I mean, make it correct. Here, there is a, a screw. And here, we have to take a spanner. And with the help of the spanner, you can make the correct temperature. So, <laughs> so we have to keep the thermometer of the sensor lower than 4 centimeters. Now this is very important. Here, you just see in this one, this place here to here is 2 centimeter. Now this place is only for digging in the soil. This is not for the uh, reading. Here, the most important part of this thermometer or the sensor of the thermometer is two centimeters away or above the last point or the very important point. So when we have to take a reading of five centimeter, we have to put the thermometer in the soil seven centimeter. Next please. <clears throat> now these are the two spaces. Just see. As I told, the temperature sensor in the soil thermometer is 2 cm up from the tip. So, many a times it is always helpful to use the spacer to position the thermometer correctly when we insert in the soil. So, when we have to measure the temperature at the depth of 5 cm, then thermometer should go inside the soil at least 7 cm. To measure the 10 cm depth, the thermometer should go inside the soil for 12 cm. So we use PVC pipe. We use PVC fire, which is actually 1.5 cm to 2, 4 cm in diameter. Just see, this is 1.5 centimeter in diameter and which can be fitted for calibration of the screw. Just see, we can put it like this. And you can use the wood block also instead of spacer sometimes and drill the hole in the wood block that will allow both 7 and 12 centimeters to poke inside this. And then we have to measure the soil temperature. Next, please. Next. <clears throat> now, how to construct a spacer? Now, soil thermometer is 20.5 centimeters from the upper side to the face of the disc. So, we have to label. Just see, here we have labeled 
for five, five centimeter, for ten centimeter. This bigger one, bigger spacer is always used for the five centimeter. Uh, excuse me, everyone. I think we have lost the connection with Dr. Garg. Let me just find out what has happened at his end. And I'll get back to you in a few minutes. Please be patient. Dr. Garg is joining in few minutes. The power is off. There is no electricity at his end. So he'll be joining in few minutes. Please be patient. He's getting back. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Uh, very much audible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you can share. You can share the slide. Yeah, yeah. Hina will be sharing. Yeah. Yes, yes. Next, please. Next. Yes. For measurement of the temperature at 10 centimeters, the thermometer should be inserted 12 centimeter. So what we do is we take for that one a, a small pipe, PVC pipe, which I think I lost him again. Uh, hold for a second, guys. We'll be using the small one. Just see here. Here, for 10 centimeter depth, uh, you need a smaller spacer. For safe uh, 10 centimeter, you need a smaller spacer and for 5 centimeter you need a bigger spacer. This way one should know. This is very important. And in general, the smaller pipe is of the length of 8.5 centimeter and for the, the bigger one is of the 12 
to 13.5 centimeter. Next, please. Next. Yes. Now, this is how we can use the uh, nail if the soil is hard or very hard. In case the soil is very hard or hard, we cannot push the thermometer directly because it will damage the thermometer. This thermometer will be damaged. So what should we do? We can do one thing. We can use a big nail. This nail should be of the good length and should be more than 12 centimeter length. Now on this nail, with the help of a marker, we can mark 5 centimeter, 7 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 12 centimeter. So all these things are marked on a nail and we use this nail for digging in the soil. We put a hole in the soil which is very hard. Next please. So what we do is we go to the uh, study site. We define about the soil, soil moisture and temperature study site. We define the whole site. And at the close of the solar noon, the other measurements time, go to your site. Generally, we go to the uh, site for measurements of the temperature also during the solar noon. So here also we generally try to read, uh, read the take the reading, take the measurements of the soil temperature in general at the solar noon time or nearer to that time. Enter the appropriate sample date sampling event in the data entry app and record it on the data sheet. See soil temperature data entry in the slide set. Next, please. Next. Just see. So what we do is use the nail to make five centimeter deep pilot hole. If in case the soil is very hard, we use the pilot hole. So we dig it with the help of a nail. So we make a hole in the soil. If the soil is very much firm, we can use the hammer also so that the hole can be of the five centimeter deep. As I told you, for 5 centimeter reading, we need to have insert the thermometer 7 centimeter. And then we have to bring it out. You need to bring the uh, this nail out. Now you have to be very, very, very careful when you're bringing out the uh, nail. Why we have to be careful? Because there is a possibility that the soil may go inside and the crack, cracks or bulges may happen. So actually, if that happens, then you have to move to 20 centimeter or 25 centimeter away from that hole which you have already done with the help of the nail. So in this way, you have to dig or make the hole of 7 centimeter and then we put the uh, this instrument. Next please. Now, insert the thermometer through the longer spacer because for 5 centimeter, you will be needing a longer spacer. So that 7 centimeter of the probe extends below the bottom of, to the guide. Just say, we take this one spacer. This whole spacer is outside the soil. Only 7 centimeter will go inside the soil. Just say. And that's why you need the spacer for the keeping the thermometer properly straight in the soil. Now, <clears throat> the back of the dial should be against the top of the spacer naturally and gently push the thermometer into the soil. We will put it gently because you have not to do, you have not to use too much of the energy. Otherwise, your dial shaped thermometer will get damaged. So, you have to use very Gently, you have to push it, please. Next. Now, wait for two minutes. Now, whenever the soil thermometer 
is put inside the soil at a particular depth, then you have to wait at least for two minutes. And when after two minutes, what you do is you wait for, you take a reading and take reading, but don't note it. Wait for additional one minute. And then you record the temperature and time in your science logbook. You take after the readings two to three times after every one minute. And if the difference of these readings is more than one degree Celsius, that means there is something wrong. If it is less than one degree Celsius, then we can note the reading. Then you can continue taking temperature after every one min minute interval. And when the two consecutive readings are nearly same, or within the range of the one degree Celsius, we have to enter the data. Now we remove the thermometer from the hole. So what we have done is, we have now measured the temperature at five centimeter depth. Similarly, we can do it at the depth of the 10 centimeter. Next please. Next. Now for 10 centimeter measurements, insert the thermometer through a shorter spacer. This is a longer spacer, just see. This is a longer spacer. And this is a shorter spacer. The shorter spacer is always used for the measurement at the 10 uh, centimeter depth. So the probe should go 12 centimeter. From here to here it should be 12 inside the soil and keep the dial of the this this is dial this is this called we call it as a dial type thermometer uh, so dial should be against the top of the spacer and then we again gently put it next please next so we take the reading we wait for 10 minutes or sorry, two minutes, and we try to see that whether the temperature is stable or not. We wait for additional one minute, take the two readings continuously after an interval of one, uh, one uh, minute. Mm -hmm. And if both the readings are same or they are within the one degree difference, then we have to record it. Now continue three, four, five readings of the same after every one minute and enter all these in the temperature site, then we can remove the thermometer from the hole. Next, please. Next. <clears throat> now take two more pairs of the soil thermometer readings. This is very important. Now, once we have taken the reading at a particular place, we have to move 25 centimeters either side. And again, do the same kind of the uh, protocol. That means you have to dig a hole. You have to put the uh, soil thermometer using the spacer. You have to wait for two minutes. Try to see the temperatures are same. Because if you do three, four places, the readings, then only the same readings will come. Then only you will find that you have taken the correct measurements. Also, possibly three sets of the measurements should be taken within 20 minutes period. If possible, read and record the current air temperature from the simple thermometer. From the simple thermometer or in the instrument shelter, you have to take the current temperature. This will tell us the difference between the current temperature of the air and the temperature of the soil at 10 centimeter and at 5 centimeter. Also, if possible, measure, record, and report surface temperature of the soil. This is very, very important. At the same time, if possible, please read out the surface temperature. For surface temperature, what we do? We put the soil thermometer 
only two centimeters within the soil. Because its sensitive part is two centimeter above. So we insert it only this much of the part and then we take the reading. So surface temperature of the soil is also taken. Then all the instruments are actually wiped, cleaned and kept safely for use in another day or after a week or after a month or in another season. Next, please. Now, Globe expects us that at least four times in a year, that means each season, Season, I told you, it may be winter, it may be summer, it may be autumn, it may be spring. Spring season in March, June is actually the summer, September is the autumn season, December is the winter season. So we have to record, if possible, the diurnal soil temperature. Diurnal soil, soil temperature means we take the reading of the data of the atmospheric shelter and the soil as well as all these things at least at 10 different locations. So just see here, we take at 8 a.m., at 10 a.m., at 12 noon, at 14, 16 like this. So the sample for the soil temperature, if we want to do diurnal, it should be done all two hourly, preferably from 8 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the evening. Next, please. When finished, wipe and clean all the instruments, of course. The second day, repeat the measurements at the same time. Each time, if possible, measure and record and report surface temperature. This is very important. I told that surface temperature we have to take and the temperature of the atmosphere. Current air temperature from the thermometer should be taken from the instrument shelter. Current temperature protocol, we already know. We have done it in the mm, atmospheric protocol. And be sure to record all the measurements only in the Celsius, not in the Fahrenheit or any other, uh, this uh, what you call, method. While a typical diurnal cycle is of course 24 hours, but during the day, the soil temperature measurements is generally done because the school students are always available from eight o'clock in the morning to the four o'clock in the evening. And that's why instead of doing it for 24 hours, we do, do it for the eight hours period. That means eight o'clock in the morning to the four o'clock in the evening. Next, please. Now, all the data which are actually taken, they should be entered in the live data entry of the globe site. So entering the new observations on the globe home page we go, we have to log in as per your school login. Then you have to write out all the different things like soil infiltration, then last observation and the new ob observation, soil moisture content, how you have taken the soil moisture content, soil temperature, whether you have done soil moisture by gravimetric method or by any other method, and the soil moisture has been taken by, by sensors or not, all these moisture and temperature is to be recorded in the globe observation site. Next, please. Soil temperature, you have to write the local temp uh, time or a universal time. I think you all know universal time is uh, uh, actually uh, what you call the Greenwich Mean Time. And in India, the Greenwich Mean Time is 5 hours 30 
minutes away from the Indian time. So enter the time at which you have taken the data in the globe book. Once you have entered the date, the soil temperature data, then the entry page will appear. Next, please. Now, we are actually measuring the current soil temperature. So we have to enter the current soil temperature. Then sample one at five centimeter depth, sample one at the 10 centimeter depth, similar sample two, sample three, sample four, sample five can be taken. And for each depth, you have to, for each sample and each depth, you have to take the measurements and enter it in the globe uh, data entry. Next, please. Next, yeah. Here, the sample one, the sample two, sample three, like this we have to take. And of course, as five centimeter depth and 10 centimeter depth. Suppose at five centimeter depth, it was 15 degrees Celsius. At 10 centimeter depth, it was 14 degrees Celsius. So once you have entered five and 10 centimeter soil temperature depths for sample one, click here, here. You have to click to add the another sample. So two, three, four samples you can always uh, write. Next, please. Next. Yes. So if you are entering diurnal soil temperature, now as I told that uh, in each season, preferably try to take the temperature diurnally, preferably in the schools at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 2 p.m., 4 p.m. So for that one, you have to write down the UTC or the local time also, date also, and then you have to enter the observation time. Select the new observation, and every time you make the entry, you have to select the new observation and the different time. And then you can enter the data. Next. Next. <clears throat> now, in case sometimes, if your data is within the appropriate range of the soil temperature, you will see the image below. You will see a face, which is a smiling face. This will show you that you have successfully entered the data. In case you there is something wrong, it is the range is inappropriate or your time is not proper or something has gone wrong, then what will happen? Then there will be a set place safe so that you can correct the errors. So address the errors identified in the messages and you can resubmit your data. If your data are outside the accepted range of the values, globe community should be contacted and they will support you that how, what is the wrong with your data and why it is not within the acceptable ranges. Next, please. Next. Yes. Now, once uh, you have given the data to the globe, you can always visualize not only your own data, but the data of the different schools throughout the world. So you can, suppose you are sitting in maybe Thailand or maybe in India or maybe in Bhutan. So you can first click your, your area and see the temperature. And then suppose you want to see the temperature of Europe then you can start just put your uh, cursor there and start zooming it. And you will know <coughs> the different schools which are entering their data. And then you can find out at five centimeter depth of the soil, what kind of the data has been observed by the different schools of the Europe or other Asia Pacific countries or some other countries. So you can always visualize the data so that you can develop your research findings. 
Next, please. So <clears throat> you can also similarly visualize the data of five centimeter depth as well as 10 centimeter depth. Next, please. So, yes, here is, uh, you can, how you can select the site and the see. This is the sampling site. The time is 3.38 p.m. and the air temperature is 33 degrees Celsius. The soil temperature for 5 cm is 28 degrees Celsius. And for 10 cm, the soil temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. So this is a very good video developed by the Globe 
Philippines, John Colape and her team. And we see, we have seen how practical we can do it and how to do it. Now the quiz which should come in your mind and which you should try to answer. Why and what is the soil temperature and why it is important for the different ecosystem processes, especially the processes of the ecosystem related with the pedosphere or the soil science. How does soil temperature impact the seed germination? Which factors influence the soil temperature the most, whether it is the insulation, whether it is the soil cover, whether it is the plant cover, whether it is the grasses, the pasture, it is the microorganisms and the macroorganisms which are present, all the factors, whether they influence the soil temperature or microbial activities. And these microorganisms may have the nitrogen fixing bacteria or the bacteria which actually uh, actually uh, make the uh, organic content in the soil, etc. How does all soil temperature vary with different soil depth? And what is the role of the soil temperature in water cycle even, as we know in an ecosystem, all the systems, that is atmosphere, hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the pedosphere, all are interrelated, interconnected. So whether the soil temperature is affecting the water cycle, if yes, how much it is affecting? So all these questions we need to answer. Next, please. <clears throat> next. So, on the next seminar or webinar, which is coming, we'll be talking about moisture and its role in plant growth. If you have any question, anything, students or the teachers or others they want to ask, they are most welcome. And once again, thank everyone for patient living and uh, bearing with me because the, there was a power failure at my